let's check out some basic skills you need for your Cricut design space. And the best part, you need not even have a Cricut to do all these. Hello everybody, this is Priya here. Welcome back to my channel. If you are returning, I really appreciate you coming back. And if this is the first time you're stopping by, a warm welcome. And I hope you love today's video and you find it useful. So for today, I have a video that has been requested by a lot of folks and I see it all over the place all the time. So I thought I should have a video with some basic uh, skills you need to work with the Cricut Design Space, which is the software for the Cricut cutting machines. And the best part, you need not even have a Cricut. You can just download the software and you can use the features which I'm going to show you. So let me just go back to the, as in the Lion King, they say, let's go back to the beginning, before the beginning. So this is the home page, And uh, let me just, yes. So this would be the actual home page, And you have something called the Cricut Access, which is a paid version. If you want to have, more options and more projects and all sorts of things for you. But I'm not a Cricut Access member. I'm not spending that extra money. The free stuff itself gives you ample opportunities to play around with, get craft. Here, let me just take you to my staff where I have all of these projects which are already there. Some I have done, some I have downloaded, some initially I had done a few boxes and a few things I had done for myself. So as you can see, yeah, some of these boxes I had made before I got busy buying stickers from Mojo Jojo Plans and the Happy Planner and all of that. So those were some things I had D done by myself and uh, this was a phone case I made for myself uh, you you can get free images of the internet very easily whatever you want it's available for free so why do you want to spend money on that so that's my theory going back to the beginning so this is the blank canvas and what I really like to do about this is again just go to the app store or your whatever the play store is on your device just download the Cricut software which is the Cricut design space so that's the name so you look that up and you download that software and then you will have just give your email address or all of that so that you will have an account there and because the best part is you can save your projects and come back to those later whenever you decide to and it will all be there because if you don't have an account you have to do all of those all over again every time you go so i would suggest you open an account and i like to change the color the bottom right bottom right not at the very bottom but the blank canvas, you see this one, I'm just using the cursor here. So you press that and at the top, you have the color options available for you. Something not too bright to interfere with whatever you're working with. Something like a light or yellow or a light orange or a light pink, any of those colors. It doesn't matter. Something other than white so that I can see the background of the stickers or the images clearly. And I like to keep the grid up, open here. So all of that, you can set this bell and then on this side, you have the settings and all of these options are available to you. The canvas, you can go there and I had the full grid on. So you can play around with it. Then if you want to connect your machine and this is where an important step happens. This is called the machine calibration. And if you see some stickers being cut off, this is where you come back and fix. So you calibrate your machine and then it should fix most, most of the problem. So this is all for people who are owners of some Cricut cutting machine. So just thought I will just walk you through how you can set the uh, grid. So that is where we are and done. And 
back to the canvas. So now we will, you have all of these on the left side column here and you press the upload. So these are all the images I have uploaded recently and you see view all and you can have all of these images. As you can see, I, brought, I bought a whole lot of stickers from Darby for Black Friday. So, and I thought I will come in and show you something with which the a few features I can demonstrate. So I will add the snowbirds uh, and these are let's say our stickers, these three sheets. She had just sent it to me. She want, she had gifted me. I haven't been able to use it. And these are, these are again Darby's. And then these were from Iowa. She, I had one, uh, one of her giveaways. So that was from there. And these are let's plan with Sarah again. So a few images that I had uploaded. So these were all um, PNG, no SVGs that I had purchased on Etsy a while back. Obviously, it's cricket related. So, yeah, so all of that. So, let's go back to the canvas now. So, once you have that image that you wanted to add, you go back to your canvas. And so this one, it is added to the canvas. But as you can see, you see that red exclamation mark. So that if you hover over it, it will show you why it is showing that. So the image is too large because there is a certain a printable area on which the Cree card can actually print. So that does not work for the uh, setting. So that is why it was showing it as a red exclamation. And as you can see now, that is gone since I reduced the size. You can either do that by reducing it like this if you want to try and play around with it for a bit. Or if you know the exact dim dimensions you want them to be, you can go ahead and this is how it normally is because this lock is in fact locked. So you go and press that and it unlocks. And then you can say, let's say 8 and uh, 10, 8 by 10. So this is how it looks. And again, you can zoom in and if that is something you want to, I like to keep it at 100% zoom here. You can increase or decrease it depending on what you want to do. So this is the basic image. But what I like to do is I play around with that roughly about it, the birds. I don't want it to look too stretched. So that is why I like to uh, make sure I have an adequate size. I have the sheet at the size I would roughly have it and then I come in and uh, I mean you can print it fully as in, in an entire sheet and that will just be fine but I like to maximize the sheet in slightly smaller images so I'm going to do what I'm going to do is I will come in and have you see this one, this image, this symbol which says duplicate. Just making sure this is highlighted. You can see the four corners and the border on the sheet. And then I go and press that. So you have the duplicate of that. And I'm just sitting it right next to this sheet. And you now have the exact sticker sheet in two smaller sizes. So you can, if you are happy with this, you can stay with this if you are satisfied with how this looks. Or if you are like me, you can do something additional. So I am just going to show you what it is and how you can do that.
So, if you notice the cardinals are all facing this direction, facing my left, and the blue jays are facing the right, and I believe those are sparrows. I'm not familiar with all North American birds. What you can do is you highlight this, you can see the four corners are highlighted, and the box, the rectangle around the sticker. Then you go to the top portion, and there are two features called arrange and flip. So I go to the flip and I'm going to flip it horizontally. So now what happens is you just flip the bird the other ways, the other way, so that the blue jay is facing this guy and the red cardinal is facing right. You notice that the title is also flipped, but that's okay by me if you want to change that as well you can just cut it out cut it out in the sense there is a feature to do that and then change it back flip it back so it can show the title as a straight um, image again but that that's not a problem for me so i'm just going ahead and highlighting both the sheets together you can see the four corners being highlighted and then you go to the bottom right and you press attach. So that's attached. Both the sheets are together. And then I flatten so that it will cut out as one single layer and not the individual components separately. So when you move, you have this. And on the right side column, you will see all the sheets here. So if you notice, you see another sheet. Let me just go back and if I move a bit to the right, you can see that this was again something I had done similar. So if you notice the leaves and I had flipped it so that I can have the leaves from different angles. So that is a cool thing I like to do with most of my sheets I do that. And now back to this sheet, what you do is you need to, if you are like me, you don't like to waste sticker paper. So you need to maximize the printable area on the uh, sticker paper the pre cut mat can take. So what I do is mine is in centimeters. The, these dimensions are in centimeters. If you can see after the latest update, what I can print maximum is 23.6 centimeters by 16.6. So I go ahead and do that. And that is the maximum printable area on the sticker paper. And after each of those changes, I really like to go back and save that just so that these things are saved then and there before we move on to the next one. Because when you move things around, there could be some changes that come about and uh, you don't want to lose any of the work or the sizing or any of that if you have put in a lot of effort like me. So this is the basic print and cut. I will show you the further step. The resizing also is easy. I showed you that. Go and change out the size on this and you are good. So that is the resizing also. So now let's talk about some basic ways you can upload the images. I'm showing you a couple of ways you can do that with the software. Let's go to the canvas and then let's choose the images here. So I'm going with, uh, let's go to the view all and then I think I will go with, uh, let's decide on which ones we are taking because the blue frosty night I want to do because once I had tested it on white paper, I want to do the clear sticker sheet this time. So I'm uploading the frosty night and uh, it's a gorgeous sticker. That's one of my favorites from Darby this time. And I'll add, go to the uh, dropped section, dropped fi drop file. And then you can either go ahead and choose that from the 
downloads so this is from iva so i go for the complex version all the, always because i don't want to miss out on any of the fine details i don't know why anybody would can do the other things so just the adventure alphabet apply and continue then select the print that's just cutting on the left side and we need the print and then cut image so you select that and that clearly has what we need so we were we are uploading that so that is one way of uploading the image and then we need another image so we'll do the browse and instead of doing the browse i'm moving that aside and going to the downloads and that was an image again those two were two sticker sheets i had bought from caitlin again over the black friday so this is a glitter fireworks gorgeous details on there so again i'm going with the complex version for the image so that i don't miss any of those filler doodles that she does in all her stickers and then apply and continue again it loads and it gives you the cut option and the print and then cut option so i'm going with the print and then cut select that you upload so these are the two ways you can upload the images you can dr uh, drag and drop that image or just go and choose the file from your downloads or wherever the destination is so just showing you the two ways you can upload the images so this is purely if you are purchasing from the etsy shops the small businesses that we are all familiar with and so many uh, amazing options to choose from so those two are on the recent uploads i choose that and select add to canvas so it pops up on our canvas in addition to darby's frosty night so yeah three huge sheets huge images as you can see by the right uh, the exclamation the red exclamations on the right side so once you select that it shows you why that red exclamation is there so there is a uh, and that low resolution just ignore that it has happened with me a couple of times even before it just shows that and then even if I print it on a full sticker sheet, nothing happens. The resolution is as good as ever. So I do not know why it is there, but I recently started spotting that low resolution warning after the recent update. So I'm not sure if it is an issue that Cricut is trying to fix, but this is uh, pretty much there on most sheets. So I've started ignoring that low resolution warning and the image being too large, we need to address that. So we are going to start our resizing. So the adventure alphabet and uh, the glitter fireworks, I think I will have both of them together on one sheet and the Darby's frosty night scraps, I will have it on one single sheet so that it can be huge because i don't want to miss any of those gorgeous details on there i'm not saying the others don't have details but since this is a scrapbook kind of feel to it in darby stickers i want to uh, do full justice to the uh, frosted snowflakes and snow flurries and the icicles see that you there you see there so that is why i'm keeping it to the max size and uh, those two i will resize i'm just reducing the size of the two sheets to make sure it is uh, fitting on one single sticker paper and uh, i i have my favorites when it comes to the sticker papers because for the clear um, i use uh, clear matte sticker paper from Mako, M-A-C-O. I'll link the item in the description. This was suggested to me by one of my friends, uh, Noam. I will also tag him here. 
and he was the one who suggested and i'm so glad he did because uh it's it's really nice mat i love the quality and it also has a slit in the back so removing the stickers is also not a problem it's one of the easiest avery i i tried a few different brands uh, do you have a favorite sticker paper that you use for the clear mat and the uh paper mat because i i would like to hear what your favorites are and uh, i'm just going ahead and playing with the sizes just to make sure it is maximizing that yeah 16.7 is good and uh yeah so that will be one huge sheet you might think it's a huge one but that's the printable area max cricut mat or the stick of the paper you are using is usually a4 size so that's why you have that and uh, that is the maximum printable area and then moving to so the frosty nights is set it's ready for the printer and then you have the other two sheets that will need to be printed so just moving that aside and i'm just going ahead and saving it i'm just naming the canvas test and uh, i'm moving that aside so that we can work on the other two sheets that need to be reduced in size so caitlin stickers are as you can see that glitter is the glitter that does not get on every surface so it's perfect you have that bling but without the mess and uh, caitlin always includes those fun doodles to fill up the space we always add so much interest to any spread so this i'm just roughly estimating it so that it will not look weird without getting squished locking that moving the next sheet right adjacent to that again unlocking that and moving the sheet right next to it and then attaching those highlighting those together going ahead and making sure it's highlighted and then yeah it should we, we should be able to fix that size just attach and flatten it has that red exclamation don't worry because we are, we are yet to fix the size i wanted to get that sh those sheets laid out correctly and uniformly I don't want one sheet to be bigger than the other so I went ahead and did that and then what I do was then then I what what I do is you unlock that lock and then you go ahead and make sure you put in the right size and then make sure the lock is open before you fix this otherwise it will just make its own proportions so that is done and then we go ahead and save and after every uh, sheet i go ahead and save it just so that it doesn't mess up with anything else yeah i wanted to also add uh, that name that uh, darby had sent me last time so i'm going to upload that image i know it was already there on my cricut design space so i just had to go look for it and put it on the canvas and show you how to resize that one you may notice a few extra words in there but i will get to that part next in the next part of the video so don't worry about that and uh, i'm just going with making sure the size looks okay you can move it you can make it bigger or smaller resizing is as easy as this as you see on the screen so you just go ahead and do that and then what you could do is you come and again it's very easy to resize so you come and make duplicates of that depending on what size you like you can shrink it down get it bigger it's it's very easy because darby sticker is already the offset is all set as you can see it is really kiss cut it cuts really close and if you would like to see the printed version i have the planner basic series that i did on how to do the name page so i had given you a few ideas there and this was one of that 
and you can get your name custom made by Darby. I have a few shops also linked to that video. I'll link that video here. I will also attach it in the, I will also add that in the description so that you can decide on who you want your names written from. So that I'm making a few sheets, a few sizes, then make sure you attach and then flatten, save it, save the project and then you go to make. So what happens is you have the frosty night on one sheet and you have the adventure alphabet and the glitter fireworks in the next sheet. And back to the first sheet, I will show you a couple of uh, precautions you need to take at this point. You go send to printer and then I like to leave the bleed on because that's a nice uh, if I don't want sometimes it so happens that the, there is a slight miscut and if you add the bleed it's usually pretty safe that way and I also turn on the system dialog before I hit print so once I hit the print the system dialog will open and it could open in the front or you might have to reduce the minimize the Cricut design space app so sometimes it pops up in the front and sometimes it's behind it's all a puzzle so as you can see my desktop has a lot of stuff so don't worry about that and uh, so this is the back to I'm just checking where it is appearing because sometimes it's a mystery sometimes it so happens sometimes it takes forever and here it is so I go and choose the quality to be the best so that's the first thing and I go change the paper size to borderless it does not make much of a difference but I don't want to take any risk and then I go to the media and quality and I press paper handling this is the most important step which has helped me quite a lot and I choose the scale to fit paper size. I go and put that check mark there before I hit the print because that's very crucial because sometimes the papers were sometimes the stickers are misaligned in relation to the paper the sticker paper so it has to fit the paper size if you you you're welcome to try that on for yourself with what works for your printer but with mine i have seen that this works wonders so that's why i religiously turn this on these days and uh, then i go and uh, the print So for my settings, what I have found is I will keep this bottom lid open. So this is how it opens. So when I press the open button here, what happens is the both of them try to open, but I close the top part back and then I'll show this part to show it to you. And this is where I load my fine point blade. And this is for extra things like my scorer or something like that in addition. So this is where the uh, fine point blade goes. And I close this part. And in the settings, this knob is where you set everything. And I've kept it to custom. So let's come back and load our mat. As you can see, this is my cutting mat. And this is a light grip mat. And these are the two sheets I just printed. This scrappy uh, frosty night is on uh, clear sticker paper and these two are on paper. So let's do the first sheet first. So I'm just lining it right at the corner here. And I like to go in with my brayer and make sure it is really down. So that is that and now back to the uh, cray cut so now you can ha see this blinking light here so that is an indication that the mat is ready to be loaded so i'm just using 
putting the mat in between those clamps and pressing it and then the creek cut symbol actually starts flashing and I just press it and it starts reading. So what I really like to do is make the room dark so that otherwise sometimes I find that my sensors actually go haywire. I don't know for some people, it depends on the machine, I guess, because some folks tell me that they need extra bright light at the um, at this time when the sensors is, are actually working. But for me, I found that I need to have a dark room so that the sensors can actually figure the lines out. So that is why I have turned off the lights in the room. And uh, all you can see is a cutting machine and my MacBook up there. So these are the only two bright spots here. And of course, you do have the lights from the other one. So now that we have the sensor is done with its job, let me just turn on the light so that we can actually see some of the process. So now we have both of these sheets printed and as you can see it is print perfectly. This is Caitlin's, this is Iva's, it is cut perfectly and moving to Darby's, this is gorgeous. Since this was unclear it just pops. But I think if you want to have that real scrapbooky kind of look for these stickers, especially with these edges, you can, you should print them on paper. But this is clear because I can do that as these are printables. So that is a, a basics of uh, print and cut stickers straightforward from the images you purchase of the small sticker shops on Etsy. Hope you liked today's video and you found this useful. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that thumbs up button and uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And please uh, drop me a comment as to which of these you knew already and which ones, uh, what you would like me to show in my next video from the Cricut series. And I will try and address them to the best of my knowledge. I do make uh, custom shirts for my kids and do special gifts for their teachers at school and all the fun things you can do. It's a fun equipment to have if you are planning to get it and you're on the fence. I hope you find a good deal. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for part two in the Cricut series where I show you some basic techniques you can do to uh, customize your images or have some more creativity brought in with the images you have. So stay tuned for that. It's in the works. So thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye.